Of life and not understanding the teachings of 
Bhagavad Gita. So, uh, with this uh, initiative of His Holiness Bhakti Raga Maharaj, we are trying to bring it back and that can be done only with a, a collective effort. Together, only we can do it. It's not one person job. Shla Prabhupada has already given us foundation. He has already said 50% is done, 50% yet to be done. And now it will be done by the expect devotees like you. We all together. And uh, again about the importance, how much it is important for Krishna. His first business is to give all protection to the cows and the Brahmas. In fact, comfort for the Brahmas are secondary. And comfort of cows is his first concern. His own is Bhakti Raga Maharaj. Um, few months back when he was here in uh, Mayapur, he gave a Bhagavatam class and he spoke on this very particular aspect and in detail, you should uh, find out the class uh, of Maharaj in Mayapur. He spoke about how Brahman, Brahman should not be feel should not feel offended if more accent is put on on the comfort of cows. It's from Shri was Mahabharata. that Dr. Jagat's class? Yes, it was His Holiness Bhakti Raga Maharaj's class. He spoke in the Bhagavatam class about that. In fact, he said that years back when he, he was speaking on this aspect, one of the Brahmins felt uncomfortable. So he, he spoke about that and he asked, I guess no one, none of the Brahmins will feel uncomfortable by hearing this. So here as you see, there are so many facilities afforded by cow protection, but people have forgotten these arts. You need to actually learn. That's the purpose of whole purpose of these courses, so that we can learn. Because we are all, I mean, most of us are are grown up uh, in cities. I, I I was grown up in city. I was going to village you know, every time to time. Fortunately, we had our village house. But I was grown up in city. So we also spoke about the Govrit. It's a how you perform. Yeah, it's one side of the machine. You will understand why go, what about Govrit. Agriculture and cow protection are the way to become sinless and thus be attractive. Devotional service. Very strong statement. Actually, Shri Prabhupada says in, in uh, other purport also that these two professions, agriculture and cow protection, are actually they are the sinless. So, O oh, Brahmins maintain a livelihood with products received from cows. This is about go breath. You see, you maintain your life. The product of cows. Sorry, it's um, just one. The view has gone. What products? We specifically stress on real, real milk. Not adulterated. So we, I, I was speaking about real flower. Not when you offer Krishna flower, we don't offer an artificial flower. We want to offer a real flower. What to speak about if, if it is a devotee grown flower? Uh, there was a lot of accent put uh, in our scriptures. How devotees must grow. Uh, how I believe Jiva Goswami or Jiva Goswami speaks about that. Real flour, real rice, real oil, real guru. So, if we are so much putting accent on this, you know, real, Sri Prabhupada spoke about many times about pseudo guru, real guru. 
why we are forgotten to put accent on real milk real milk and real milk products we should offer them to krishna not the adulterated not those which has been stolen not which has got a lot of hormones not which has got uh, anything and everything but not milk i was talking to my friend officer and he mentioned that there is a lakhs and lakhs liter worth milk products found which were not having milk at all they are all synthetically made paneer yogurt and everything so what it will bring it will bring disease your internet connection it's showing my internet connection is unstable so if can you hear me yes sure. prabhu okay i need to get back so otherwise um can't see there is certain yeah so in one of the papers from asian journal of science this was mentioned cow is the backbone of agriculture and rural economy it sustains our life it affects cattle wealth biodiversity represents sorry cattle wealth and biodiversity again another very strong statement from shri bhagavatam 14:34 and uh, <clears throat> So society, society devoid of devoid of cow protection and ruminant agriculture is not under the direct protection of them. So if we are lacking these things, cannot expect direct protection of Lord, and which means the current society. So at least for a section of the members of society. the proper is saying doubt of protection and activation of brahmin qualities in human society at least for a section of the members of society so who he is referring to basically the proper is referring to the devotees that at least a section of the society will act in such a way that cow protection will happen brahmin culture will be taken. yeah another where wealth and strength are not engaged in the advancement of brahmanical culture god consciousness cow protection these three things the state and home are surely doomed by providence so we can see here here is a very interesting you can see a calf in the left side can you see the screen right yes bro yeah i can so see you see this calf is a tiny calf the small is hardly one month old calf maybe less than that 15 days to month hari krishna bro ji and yes proje your voice is not audible proje okay so i'll try to stay closer and if required i can put microphone headphone let me try with the headphone maybe to meter Hare Krishna. Is it better? Yes, Roji. Now yes. it is better. Is it better now? Yes. yes. Oh. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yes. Yes, Prabhu. This is good. It's good now. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for your feedback. So this calf, uh, I was saying that this calf is hardly fifteen days to one month old. It's just newly born like a newly born child uh you know 5 6 months old child and he has been put this you can say it's not a mask but it's just that he cannot go and drink the milk of his mother so 
this slide is showing that this brings to this. We will be doomed by providence that we want to do this. Maybe in this or next life, we have to suffer like that because that birthright but when we snatch it even if we buy it it's also snatching in fact does everybody understand what i mean when i say that it's snatching when you buy it please, please explain prabhu um give me an example if you go in market and somebody is selling say a fancy car which may cost say half million dollar and he's selling it for fifty thousand dollars and you buy it later you come to know or you i mean you come to know by by police because they come and they say well, you have bought a stolen car so you will also be responsible for for getting into the crime so does that make sense can you understand now what i mean when i say that when you are buying milk that milk has been stolen so we also become party any comments yeah uh, do you mean that if it's we heavy. it's it's little heavy i understand but that's the truth that's a fact because buying that milk this stuff is not getting so we may say that okay we will not buy then also he will not get but then we will never have a model where we can actually have cows with their calves who are healthy and satisfied we have to strive for that so we will keep getting milk and why 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 one should have a cow or why one should strive for any model where he can get milk from the protected cow Does that make sense? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah. So let us, for now, just accept. I mean, just take it as an information. We are not saying that you change this or you change that. We are not asking that. But as a matter of fact, it's because there are consumers. who are ready to buy the stolen cars or a stolen product there are people who are stealing and selling imagine there are no consumers who would buy the stolen product what these people will do who are stealing so it doesn't matter that there there is a big market so many people are anyway buying the stealing product so we may also do it what to do no and maybe 110000 of people buying the stealing product and somebody there are hundreds of uh, thousands of people who are stealing doesn't mean that we should also join them no Look at this beautiful picture. This is a devotee living just next to us. This is uh, our bull, Yashwardhan. The bull is the emblem of moral principle. The cow is the representative of the earth. You see this. When bull and the cow are in joyful mood, it is to be understood that the people of the world are also in joyful. another statement wherever cows live fearlessly that place becomes sacred 
on the top is giriraj govardhan lal and uh, the white one is dharmakshetra yeah here this particular quote i uh, i chose because sometimes devotees or people think that krishna was only herding cows no krishna was herding cows and bulls both while herding the very beautiful bulls you can read so the lord used to blow his flute and that scene live in his faith for followers the cowherd boy and he shla propad makes a statement with only these two things cows and grains humanity can solve its eating problem and this problem now getting you know bigger in the sense that especially in the light of this uh, pandemic as i said imagine these type of things go little more there will be completely chaos those who will have food they will only survive not those who have got aeroplanes because those who are had aeroplanes they were earning because we were traveling now we are not traveling and all the aeroplanes are just standing on the airports also he spoke about that these three principles the human life is attained the perfection of human life is attained by following these three principles of civilization protecting the cows maintaining the brahmanical culture and above all becoming a pure devotee of the lord actually it goes like that you know ascending and descending we can see how it is very interesting that to become pure devotee of lord generally we have to go through the brahmanical culture right it's not like we can just jump it and brahmanical culture to maintain you have to protect the cows because as we read bull is the representation of dharma it's not just um just is an animal just it no much more than that so we spoke about that let's focus on the first principle protecting the cows and then we discuss what does protection means how to care for bulls and cows so that we are not doing more harm than good it's like you know okay i will protect the bull and I, if you take it in on your fifth floor and keep it on the balcony that won't be protection so we we should learn that what is good for them what is good for them similarly like when we invite our good friend or we invite in a spiritual master or some senior person or a respected personality we want to know what they like what they like what they dislike so we offer whatever they like and what is the value of cows spiritual emotional value and economical value we spoke about these things exhibit competence and confidence in basic cow care this was uh, we said that going to be our second session and this is now the second session we have we'll quickly go through is there any question so far because today's session is mostly going to be question answer and we will speak about little bit uh, about the care and uh, how to uh, check the abuse how to find it out uh, and what we can do in in practical we'll be discussing is there any question so far can everybody hear me clearly now now clear prabhu okay with the, with the headphone it's better right yes okay seems to be so we spoke about the know the difference between a cow and a bull we also discussed earlier that uh it's not that cow is more valuable than bull because sometimes in scriptures uh, we see speaking about cows goraksha so ashla prapa says there is no difference between cow and bull bull they are same i mean because both are uh, it's same as we say there is a different between hari krishna prabhu 
Yes, Bharadevi Prabhu, you, you uh, have raised your hand. Uh, yes, yes. Yeah. Prabhu, just, uh, just uh, we want to start uh, with two cow. We, uh, so we, I want to know about the basic uh, preparation in the, in the okay. beginning now. Okay. So can okay. you guide us? Sure. So we'll we'll get there. Um, let us let us go through so those who have not joined our our review it and then okay. we will talk okay. about that. Maybe a few things we can uh, talk also personally, which will be more relevant to your particular case. So we can do that also. We will discuss a little bit about your uh, particular project and the details we can talk personally between you and me, right? Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we said that both are equally valuable. So there is nothing like cow is more valuable than bull or bull is more valuable than cow. Both are equally. Uh, in all aspects, spiritual aspects and all other economical aspects, etc. Mm -hmm. We also said all bulls are not of same temperament. Similarly, like people are having different temperament and character, bulls and cows have got different. Very sensitive, very personal, and uh, they love personal interaction. So it's not an impersonal thing that, oh, I have got cows. I was just sitting with a few devotees a couple of days back and uh, daughter of this devotee, young girl, she was saying, Krishna has got um, a mala, which has got different colors of the beads. And these different colors, they represent different color groups of the cows. And when Krishna will call one group of yellow color, we'll put them down. If anybody would like to... Um, will be interested more about this particular, uh, how Krishna was calling them, what was happening, we can discuss it separately or in the end of the class or whenever. <clears throat> yeah. Know the difference between a bull, an ox and a steer. So that, uh, I would like to ask if anybody can explain or if someone remembers what we discussed in that. Anybody? Yes, Kaliya Prabhu. I, I missed the uh, program, but I've heard Dr. Kumar mention that uh, an ox is a trained bull. Yes. And a steer is a castrated bull. Right. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely right. Yes. So I guess everybody heard. A bull is a bull, Vrishabha. And uh, when he's trained in working uh, in the field or pulling a cart or doing some other works, then he is called as an ox, which is not actually in, in Vedas, there is no. Difference is not there. And I didn't find anything mentioned in that, that steer type of word, especially, that there is a castrated bull. So that uh, word also I didn't find, but in English it is there. So a castrated bull will be steer, whereas a bull is a full-fledged bull who is uh, who can perform his activity also to increase the progeny. Male calf and bull. So the difference between a male calf and the bull, like as I said, that we recently rescued this male calf. So he's uh, almost getting to the point of yes, Jivan Prabhu, to becoming bull. He's now getting one year. Jivan Prabhu, you raised your hand. Hare Krishna. Who? Yes. No, I didn't raise my. 
I'm not no, raising my hand. Okay. Okay. And a female calf and heifer. So similarly, like uh, there is a difference between a male calf who, who cannot act as one who can increase the progeny and he becomes a bull, then only he can do. Similarly, a female calf can only do it um, when the monthly cycle starts and she becomes uh, a heifer. And I can... Harikishna Dayan Mukunda Prabhu, we can't see the presentation on the screen. Really? Okay. I don't know why the sharing is going on, but why it has not happened. Okay, let me share it again. Share. Can you see now? No. Yes, now. No. Thank you. You can see, right? Okay, so that's technical glitch. Some kind of. Yeah. Can you see now? Right? Yes. Yeah. So we spoke about female calf and heifer. I believe everybody understands now. Right? How does one approach a bull or cow? So that's a very interesting. Um, there is an etiquette how we approach. We should be very respectful. We should be very full of consciousness and cautious. And in this picture, particularly written, this young Nandi Sevak, this is one Mali, a young boy, nine year old, has spontaneous and is spontaneously understood bull etiquette. So he is like, he has love, and that's why he can okay do. But generally, we don't ride the bulls. We don't uh, um, become like very familiar uh, relationship. Should be lovingly. If you have relationship, then you can do like uh, Arjun had with Krishna. So because of love, he was even apologizing that I was very kind of familiar with Krishna. So please forgive me when we are sharing the you know, eating together or sharing and uh, we are lying down. When does a cow start giving milk? Can anybody reply that? Because parallel to the presentation, I would like to hear from you what you are learning. Immediately after a calf born. Very good. So immediately after a calf gets birth. Yes, Kumadaksha Prabhu. Yes, Prabhu. I mean, uh, if they already have calf, then because it is the uh, they is they is showing their affection to the calf, so the milk mm. is coming out, coming out from. Right. I mean, it's like any mother, any any mammal will have milk when they give birth because that milk is the food for that particular child. So similarly, cow is also giving milk, but cow gives milk to her child and she can potentially feed humans also. But it's not like she gives milk for us and calf may also get. That's a wrong understanding. Is that clear? Yes, no. So then we also spoke about feeding management that this, these are the bigger uh, sections, uh, the details. We will touch, um, today we will touch the basics, but the details will be probably in the advanced course and housing management. These two things are very vast, it's a big uh, information and how we do. So housing management also, we spoke about that. 
and there are uh, three types of housing management as this is a picture on the right corner below this is a picture in the villages taken in one of the villages where we treat the cows from nandi sanctuary mayapur uh, above that is a picture of nandi sanctuary bulls three bulls giriraj govardhan lal uh, janmashtami the black one and the light brown is mitai and left side is a picture also uh, where a herd is going for pasture going for grazing in the pasture ground so can anybody uh, does anybody remember what three types of housing we discussed yes bro we spoke about that one type of housing is when a cow or bull is tied just tied to to a post and it is being fed and it lives where uh, a cow or bull is housed the second one is that they have got a uh, closed enclosure they can live there they can walk they can go for a short walking area from their um feeding trough and water trough and they are free they have have free access to food water and shelter the third one is they are living in a place which you can say cow shed where they stay overnight or so but from morning till evening they are outside in the fields grazing or walking there's a third type there may be few sub types in between uh, a mixture of few things but may in mainly three categories divided so for your information most of the cows i would say 95 to 98% they fell in the first category when either they are tied or they are confined in a very small place any question as of now can are you all i think yes. can con can continue prabhu <laughs> okay okay because as i said today this is the, the the final class now it's already we have covered and 45 minutes past so at some point i will be turning it off and we will i'll try to go with my phone and log in so so that um, we can in practical see few things with right the krishna prabhu ji yes yes bro uh, prabhu ji uh, i heard uh, this cow they need some type of particular grass what is that name and what type of grass they like it too much okay hmm everybody heard the question yes yeah uh in bengali there is a saying goru ki khai ghas khai yes right so that means what a cow eats cow eats grass uh, i remember when we were writing essay in our class 2 3 or whatever on the cow we will write all this thing cow is our mother she eats grass she gives milk all those things or it say in our gujarat it say some type of lachka or something okay okay lachka. i'm not aware of that yeah uh but cows they eat just grass they just eat grass mm -hmm. and grasses are different and okay. different grasses in different times in different places so i would say that um whatever sweet grass is there growing if you let them go to graze 
cows they will not go and eat each and every uh, grass they go and they sniff like you can see this this picture do you see this uh, picture on the screen yes yes prabhu ji okay yes. so this is interestingly i took this picture uh, it's a few years back this is gauri priya and they are in a field where we were growing sweet sorghum so the sorghum is as high as 5 feet you can see it's going above the crowd it's a grown up gir cow and uh, the sorghum is going high and they will be eating the tips of that because cows bulls um all these uh, animals who graze they like to chew or uh, pick up the tip of the grass that's the way actually they help more the process of photosynthesis because they eat the tip it's like pruning of the plant the pruning of plant gives the uh, let the plant or makes the plant grow again and do that uh, work of photosynthesis so it's uh, so they are eating this uh, sweet sorghum okay. and uh, if it is not being grown just the regular perennial perennial grass they will go and they will uh, eat that but they will find like durva grass durva grass is sweet and if we remember from uh, krishna's past time mother yashoda would grow few very special grass for the cow which will eat that uh, for those cows which will eat their, that grass what that called pangandha anybody remember that yeah panchgandha cow hmm okay so they will they will eat that particular grass and their milk will have that aroma and that milk was fed to the cow another cow which will be then milk and that milk was given to krishna so anyway that was quite quite a lot of uh, some other past time milk management <laughs> <laughs> that, that is called love the mother yashoda has so much of love that she would do all these different steps so that krishna gets the best of the man yet krishna will go and steal what are other gopis also anyway coming back to the grass uh different type of grass are there sometimes you grow sometimes you can grow corn sweet sorghum so many so many there are uh, like napier like we are growing at the moment but ideal is the the grass which grows in your place that is best but for nutrition because now the soil is not so strong soil is mostly deficient of the minerals so we grow so that they get all kind of minerals and other uh, substance which are lacking okay thank you so that, that replies your question yes thank you thank you mm-hmm. so um regarding feeding management is there anyone i mean i think jeevan prabhu or who who has got cows bulls yes now please kaliya prabhu you want to say something yes yeah. yes prabhu just asking about uh we had a drought here for a couple of years and uh um we were feeding some grains to the cows supplementing sometimes some a uh, dal which was donated um to a dal and then mixing that with soaking it overnight with water and then uh mixing it with some makai flour and then feeding it sometimes to the uh on set every second day feeding that to the bulls to try and give them some sustenance so what right. is your where is it it's new zealand australia australia yeah. yeah 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 i heard australia has got this challenge what do you do uh, in terms of that drought should not uh, continue or 
should be rain what do you do in terms of practical work we were not really prepared we had a lot of cows and um really overbred the cows so we had 85 cows and uh then um, we found we had no grass and that situation went on for a good extent of two years a good part of two years mm. and we had to uh, collect funds and buy a lot of a lot of hay and uh, yeah. silage and sometimes it wasn't easily available but somehow we managed to get enough but we also supplemented it with donations of uh like this tour dal, we got a truckload of tour dal and we uh, mixed that with water and and makai flour and gave it to the cows to send to uh, sustain them. That's good. That that's right. But um, you are getting this um, hay and silage from where you are getting far away. Um, well, initially it's grown close by, but when the drought got worse, they were bringing it from far away and it was quite expensive. Okay. And and what about the the bore water bore, bore well water? You don't have that or the water level has gone down? Our bore system here is in the local area, it's um, contaminated, it's a bit salty. The farmers don't usually use the bore water directly on the fields. Hmm. Okay. We have a we have a little river and we pump that water into our dam. From there, we can do some irrigation. Hmm. But even the river dried up after some time. So the water oh. was, um, there was enough water for drinking hmm. because we have the dams there, but not enough to irrigate. Hmm. Now it's replenished. Now the uh, last, last this year, the, the rainfall has been reasonable again and things have come green. So the tendency in the area that we live in, yeah, uh, a few years is all right, and then you'll get a couple of bad years. That's my experience over a couple of decades. That there's a couple of poor okay. years. Uh, do you grow rice there? No, we don't grow rice. It's it's a dry dry climate. Only uh, hundred mils per year, or about thirty oh. inches of rain. Okay. Okay, but you said that you have got a, a river, a stream there. So you can't grow rice from there? Not enough? Um, we've never really tried to grow rice here, Doyle Mukunda. We've, we've grown some wheat a couple of times just as an experiment. We haven't made it into a... So wheat you got? Wheat you got? We can grow it here. Wheat, wheat you have, you, you got wheat growing? Not now, but uh, several years ago, one devotee, Gopinath Acharya, came here and, and uh, grew a few acres of wheat. And we just to see if it grows nicely in this area. We, just like you, we can cultivate sorghum, maize, um, millet, any crops like that will grow here. Yeah. But you can you can grow wheat also because it will feed the humans and. Uh, the residues water left from there can be easily fed to the cows. Yeah, we would like to grow grow wheat, but we, we don't have many people working on the agricultural side here. Okay. It's been, uh, so, it's been, uh, I mean, I can only say that if we have got 85 cows, that's a good number. Now there's 74. Yeah, 74 cows. Oh, I think some sound is coming background from someone's microphone. Uh, they can turn it off because I don't know whose microphone is that. So uh, I can only say that we need to focus on farming. We have 70 cows plus. It means that the cows need food uh, and it can only come by growing, not just for cows, like sweet sorghum, I mean, sorghum also, you can have that uh, javar for humans. Um, when it grows, you can get seeds and make uh, flour from sorghum, sorghum flour. So those things should be grown so that humans can be fed and the cows 
can be fed from there. That would be the best. If it is a dry climate, then that's why I ask about wheat. If wheat is possible, grow wheat. If required, we can maybe hire men because uh, we shouldn't uh, you know, get in this position where it is a drought and we don't have enough to feed our cows. We should have enough for at least, uh, at least one year or if not one year, then at least six months enough so that we can at least half feed them until the situation gets good and work out with grains like you have done. It's a wonderful, wonderful service you people have done there that even in the drop you, drought, you could uh, take care of them. Yeah, it's, it's wonderful. Yeah, well, it's been... Uh... It's been a struggle here, Dial McCundon, really not enough people to look after a big farm for many years. So it's just sort of coming up. You, you have got a quite, quite a good, uh, um, you know, uh, amount of land, as I remember. Do you, do you know about this farm? Because we have another farm called New Govardhan, which is a bigger farm. Okay. Quite a big... And this one? This one? This is called New, Go New Gokula. We just have a very small... Um, very small yatra here, but it's quite a how big many, land. It's, how many acres of land do you have? We have, it's about 500 acres, but there's about 180 acres of arable land. 180 acres of? Of agricultural style land. A lot of, a lot of the land that we have is on a mountain. So but right. we still have it. I have seen the pictures in your website. Okay. Yeah. It's a beautiful place, actually. I mean, it's a beautiful place. And when you have got that much of land, if only you could have enough water, which I would suggest, I can only give the example uh, of uh, one of the Ukraine yatras in Ukraine. Um, they didn't have water in one of the village. The name of the village was without water. The village called without yeah. water. You know, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. And the devotees got some place, I think, I, I guess, either free of cost or for a very cheap price or whatever. And they went there. And anywhere you dig the well, you get salty water. So people were not living there. They were leaving from there. And very few families were somehow or other they were making. And these devotees got there and they started Harinam Sankirtan holy names and they had uh, with the faith that we'll get some good water and sure enough very soon they dig the well and everybody was looking oh these devotees are digging well they are some kind of you know people let's see what comes to them they are um, following the principles of God and when they dig the well it was sweet water they found the sweet water and really inspired. So I can say holy name, some kind of Agnihotra Yagya, which are all recommended by scripture, we should do with, with a lot of faith. Like now this is going on the month of uh, Shravan, uh, the month of Lord Shiva, who is Maha Vaishnav. We can pray to Lord, Lord Shiva. He could hold the whole Ganga on his head. You can pray him and his nandis are there so definitely the help will come i think uh, only supernatural help can help it's not about the technicality and of course you could do really good planned grazing that's another like a huge topic maybe we can no, discuss I'm... it separately yes yeah we've been studying a little bit i've been studying a little bit about uh holistic management and, uh, and, and uh, you know, yes. intensive herd, herd. Yeah, but um, I, I can tell you about the practical part that in Rajasthan, if you go and Google, Rajasthan is the west of India. It's a dry place. It's, there is a desert and basically it's a sandy soil there. It's sandy soil there. And uh, my friends, uh, colleagues who have got farm there with 300 cows after three years 
they have got a very good success the water table which was uh, around 150 uh, around 120 or 150 meters or even at places 200 meters down below the earth has come to somewhere around 30 meters or so or 25 or 30 meters it's amazing result they they have got rain coming there they have got a um, uh, lot of green grass growing food growing trees growing and they did it by the method of plant grazing so that's practically i have seen it so i can just tell that it's very much possible i don't think exactly. in australia you have drier than rajasthan you can google it rajasthan yeah. jaipur and these these devotees and these people they are just next to jaipur 40 kilometers from jaipur what's the name of their farm i said no no special name uh, it's uh, one one indian lady she is there with her family and they have done it and i know very closely them and my good friend one devotee is managing there ajit prabhu I can give you the connect, uh, you know, connect you. You can ask for the details. Okay. But I, I have very closely seen Dr. Shri Kumar. In fact, he is the consultant there. He goes there every year. Is that what he is doing similar in Belgaum? Uh, he is doing similar in Belgaum, but Belgaum has got much lesser cows and um, much more land. But that land is also, you know, they are organizing it. Uh, uh, by plant grazing now, keeping the bulls there in, in the farm. So this is a lady called, her name is Deepti. So she is doing, she was in US for many years and she moved to India. And uh, she has been taking care of cows and bulls for the last many years. Any other questions anybody has got? Or we can quickly go to see um, our bulls and have the questions there. Jeevan Prabhu, is there any question? You mentioned earlier, just slides are not changing, that's it, right? Okay. Uh, everybody can hear me? Yes, yes, Prabhu. Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Yes, yes, Prabhu. Yes, I can hear. Okay. So, Uh, I will be turning off now and then I'll again log in through my phone and we can uh, we can discuss with practical points along with the bulls. Is that okay? Yes. Yes. Fine. All right. Hare Krishna. Yes, Kalia Prabhu. Haribo? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yes. You raised the hand. You want to ask no, something? No, sorry, I didn't. Okay. No, I didn't, I didn't raise my hand. No problem. I'll just... Okay. So I'm ending, but I will start. So you just please be online. Everyone.